Hey guys, it's Elena. Welcome back to my channel. So you may recognize this fabric if you've seen my last video and it's because I just loved it so much and I wanted to make a jumpsuit out of it. I love it, you're gonna love it. It's so cute and it's perfect for summer. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. So here we are. This is the pattern that I used for this romper jumpsuit. I started off by washing my fabric, of course, and then I am just cutting out all my normal pieces that would fit me. So because of the way that I got this fabric and the direction, I wanted to be really specific about how I cut each piece to make sure it lined up nicely and was straight. So I cut everything out one at a time <laughs> took a long time, but once I was done, I started on the pants. So these pants have darts and pleats in them. So for the pleats, I am just marking where it says to on the pattern, marking with a chalk, and then pinching it in and pinning it. So then I can go ahead and sew along that marked line into the triangle. So basically just start at the fat end and then just sew until I get to the end of the fabric and basically sew off. So that is done with the darts in the back of the pants and then on the front they have just a single pleat on each front panel. So again, I'm just kind of marking where the dart says it is on the pattern. I'm marking with chalk and then folding over my fabric so that the left marking meets the right marking and then pinning it really straight and securely and then just sewing along that line on the front. So I can make sure that it looks really nice and straight and that it just looks like professional, you know? I like to sew it down the front so that way I can see how it looks. And then I'm just also sewing along the top to make sure that that flap isn't flapping up. <laughs> and then once I have done that for all pieces of my pants, I am just starting to put them together. Pants always kind of throw me off, so I usually consult the pattern at this point a lot but I'm basically putting the pant front and pant back together at that center seam. And then also at the same time, I am putting in my pockets. So I'm just lining them up right sides together at the top of the pant and then sewing each pocket to its coordinating pant panel. So I'm sewing each pocket to the pant front and the pant back and then once I have done that, I put the rest of the pant pieces together and then I am just moving on to my bodice. So just like I did before with the pant darts, I'm just doing a similar process for the bodice darts. I'm just kind of marking with pins and then marking with chalk so it's a little bit easier for me to see when I go to sew and then pinching it in and then like before I am just starting at the that part of the triangle and then just sewing a straight line until I go completely off of the fabric. It's really important to either tie off your fabric or to backstitch a tiny bit so that that point doesn't ever come undone. Once I have done that for all of my bodice pieces, there is two darts on the front panel and then one dart on each back panel. I am just sewing together my bodice pieces. So I am pinning at the shoulder seams and then also at the side seams, making sure those are all nicely lined up. And then you can just sew those pieces together, right sides together. When doing bodice pieces like this, I always try to emphasize directional sewing. So sew top to bottom on both sides and 
left to right on both sides. It really does help make your garments look more professional and sit better. Um, and then once I have done all of those seams on my bodice, I am just finishing off those raw edges with my serger. This is a little bit of a new step for me. I haven't had the serger very long, but it honestly makes such a big difference. Uh, and then I am moving on to my sleeves. So I'm just doing a long basting stitch at the top of the shoulder so that I can gather it a tiny bit so it will ease in better. And then I am sewing along that side or bottom seam of the sleeve. I am nesting that in with my bodice piece and I find that part is the most important. So start there and then go up the left side, go up the right side until you get to the top of your shoulder. And then you can adjust that gather, add a little bit more, take some away until it fits perfectly. And then you can just sew a big long circle all the way around. So here is the finished sleeves with that bottom seam of the sleeve lining up with that side seam of your bodice. That's what we want. It looks so good. And then we are just matching up our facing pieces so that we can finish off the neck raw edge of our bodice. So instead of having just one big circle, I cut out three little pieces. So I'm just sewing those pieces together so that we have one continuous facing piece. And then once I have done that, I didn't show this part, but I did go ahead and serge those pieces that I'm sewing right now, just so that I don't have to do that at a later point. And then once I'm done with that, I can go ahead and attach that facing right sides together with the neck of the bodice. So when you're doing this, the most important thing is to nest and match up the seams. So I have two seams on my bodice and I'm matching up the two seams that are on my facing. And then I'm just going in and filling in the rest with pins and then going and sewing all along there with a very small seam allowance so that I can slash it a tiny bit and then go ahead and serge that raw edge in hopes to get it to sit as flat as possible. It's also really important to iron at this point. It makes a really, really big difference in how flat your facing sits. So here is that surged edge, that surged seam allowance of my facing. And then what I'm going to do next is understitch. So I'm going to sew that seam allowance to the facing. And when you are wearing this garment, you shouldn't be able to see the seam at all. And that's why we're doing it. It will help your facing stay down better without actually having to do a top stitch that would be visible. A doing a top stitch isn't like the worst thing in the world, but if you can avoid it, usually things look a little bit more professional if you don't have one. So I find that if you can do a nice small under stitch and then do a really good iron, that usually will do the trick. So just to help in that effort of keeping my facing down, I am just doing a quick little stitch in the ditch. So I'm just folding the facing down how I want it. And then I am just sewing the facing to my bodice at the shoulder seam. So there's already a seam there where I attached the front and the back of the bodice. And that way you can't even see it, but it helps keep the facing down. And then we're moving on to the next best step, which is attaching your bodice finally to the pants. 
So just like we have been talking about earlier, it's really important to match up all of your seams from the top and the bottom. So I'm starting with my side seams, those are the most important ones. And then I am matching up the darts in my pants in the back to the darts that are in the back panels of my bodice. And then going in and filling the rest in with pins, making sure that it's very secure for when I go to sew it all together. And then this is the finished product. We get something that looks very nice everywhere. All my seams are nice and lined up, nothing's crooked. And then I'm just going and finishing off that raw edge with a quick serge. And then, just like that, we are moving on to the zipper. I really like doing invisible zippers. I literally only do invisible zippers. So I'm just taking my invisible zipper after ironing the teeth open a little bit and pinning it right sides together to the back opening of my romper. I usually start with just doing one side of my zipper and then close it and pin the other side after that and then I will go and sew one side at a time. I do have a tutorial on invisible zippers. If you need a little bit more instruction than what I have here, they do take a little bit to get used to, but once you've got it down, it's really not too bad. So one way that we can make our garment look really extra professional is just to make sure that we secure our facing down to that zipper so that it looks really nice when we're zipping it in and out. So I am just putting my facing right sides together and then just keeping on with my zipper foot, just sewing along that bump where the zipper is so that when I flip it right sides out, the zipper is sticking out but it's in between and sandwiched between our facing and the outside. So it just looks really, really good. I really like how it turns out and it's cute. And the top is lined up, the back is lined up, and we are all set to go. All we pretty much have left is to hem the rest of our raw edges. So at this point you can trim your shorts to be the length that you want. And then you can finish these off any way that you like, but I really like how a double folded hem looks. So I'm just folding mine up about a three quarters of an inch, folding it up again, hence the double folded, <laughs> ironing it really nicely and crisply, and then I am pinning it. Once I like the length and everything is sitting nicely, I am just doing a really short seam to secure that fold, that hem, and I'm doing as close as I can get it to that fold, and it looks great. I'm doing that for both pants and then also for both of my sleeves. And then I am moving on to the last final step, which is a little sash belt thing that I'm making. So I just have two pieces of fabric that I'm sewing together so that I have one long piece of fabric. I folded it in half, sewed down all the way, and then I just am picking open a little spot towards the center so that I can put it right sides out. This step took me quite a while because it is a long, skinny tube but I eventually got it all the way and then I gave it a really, really nice iron and then you can whip stitch or top stitch that opening closed and then it just turned out really great. And here is the romper. I really, really like it. I'm pretty happy with the fit and I would definitely make it again. I really wanna try making a little bit more casual next time. So I want to do a gingham, of course, but I hope you guys love this tutorial and let me know if you end up trying it and I'll see you in the next one.